folks, Michael McGee here. As you know, we've got wild pigs on the homestead just hanging in my neighbor's cooler, and that makes us very happy. Well, today I decided I'm going to get them bacons off that pig. So I went over there and I cut the bacons off. All you got to do is when you remove the bacon, you just want to cut over on that belly meat. Come up in a straight line so you don't get into your back straps, otherwise known as pork chops. Come across under that shoulder and then just fillet it off. That's all you gotta do. When you get done with that, it's gonna look like this right here on the skin side, and this right here on the rib side, in the meat side. So I'm gonna lay this baby out. Now, as you know, it is not winter time. Wild pigs, they come through when they come through. You can't make it happen in the winter. That don't mean you have to kill them then. But if you've got a field full of sorghum cane or corn or something, they're destroying it, you got to get the trap set. So that's what happened. And when I'm called and they say, hey, we've got pigs, uh, Micah McGee, he don't mess around. He says, yes, sir. So I've got some of those floating cartilage ribs in there. I'm just going to take them out. Now, at this point, I'm not going to salt cure them in my ice chest like I normally do because I don't want to go have to get ice and stuff and separate with the bag, do all that mess. I have done that before, but I'm going to use a refrigerator method this time. And so in order to do that, I am going to use Ziploc bags. I've got a piece of shoulder cartilage here. I'm going to trim it off. We're, we're about ready. This is such a simple process. Now, bacon can be as complicated or as simple as you want to make it. As you know, if you've been following me for any period of time, I'm the simplest simple as they come. So here's what we're going to do. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one of my Ziploc bags out. These are two gallon bags. And I'm just going to see what size I need. Boy, that's close. That's close. Well, I, I like my bacon actually to be about this long in the skillet. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and square it up so I can get it into my, into my bag easily. Look at those strips. This is wild now. This is not domestic pork. I'm going to come across here with another run. And I'm gonna go ahead and square it up as well. And then this is the actual middling meat. This is the belly, the belly flap, or the otherwise known as. Ugh. All right. Now we're not doing the equilibrium method because that requires measuring, weighing, and all that. You know I don't do, I don't go for that measuring stuff. I don't know what the real terminology is. I call it the saturation method. I want to lay as much salt in there as it can handle. And instead of leaving it in there for a designated period of time, as in a long period of time, I'm only going to leave it in there for just a few hours, overnight. Right now, we're about three o'clock in the afternoon, so overnight is not gonna be that long. And in warmer weather, even though it's in the refrigerator, we have humidity and we've got all that going on, it is going to really soak up that salt nicely. Now we're just gonna throw another one in. I've got enough salt on top of that to take care of the bottom. Throw another handful in there. I'm gonna take another one, throw it in here. And what I'm gonna do after I get this in here, I'm gonna shake it around. So if the bottom doesn't have enough, it will get it. Now I'm gonna take this one. I'm going to put him in here like this. And I'm gonna take this one, put him in here like this. Now I'm just gonna lay the salt to it, as you can see right here. And this is one of my bacons complete. Now what 
I'm gonna do is get this started on the zipper. And I'm gonna fold this and I'm gonna press the air out of it as best as I can. And there we have it. That is guaranteed to be good in the morning. And in the morning, we're gonna fry some of this up and you're gonna participate in at least watching some of it get devoured. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this bacon. I'm gonna get it all done. And we'll see you in the morning for breakfast. All right, we have woke up to a absolutely gorgeous morning. And I got this out of the refrigerator. I'm just gonna dump it out here and we'll see what we got. All right, look at that. Now, that looks good, looks good. My favorite just happens to be the belly part. It's a softer, this here off the ribs got a little more meat content. I like fat content to be honest with you. That's a hard chunk of salt. I'll just, I'm just gonna wash all this down here. It helps keep the grass killed out on my gravel. So let's wash this off real quick. Get this salt off here. We'll slice this and see what this bacon looks like. Here's my cutting board. And here's my Victoria Knox knife that Longbow Banjo gave me. It's got my name on it. Boy, I tell you what, I have really been enjoying that knife. Now what you'll notice the next day after you cure this, the meat is firmer. It's, it's soaked that salt. The salt has drawn moisture out of the meat. So that firms it up, makes it easier to slice. And you can use a meat slicer. If you're gonna use a meat slicer, you definitely wanna put it in the freezer and get it almost half frozen. So when you put it through that meat slicer, it doesn't fold up, wad up or anything. But these knives here, these Victorinox knives are amazing. And of course I've got a link for these Victorinox knives in the description of this video. You can just go right on and get you one. But I want you to look at that bacon right there. Perfect strip. And it has got two streaks of fat, two streaks of meat. This is wild pork, folks. This is not domestic. Now, let me get this belly part. This is really my favorite for eating. Slice it down through here. I told you, I like the fat. I like fatty meat. <clears throat> Maybe that's why I raise Mangalitsa. Mangalitsa pigs are amazing fatty, fatty meat. Now this here has got like four streaks of fat, four streaks of meat, much more layered. The old timers used to call this the Midland meat. If you ever hear somebody say Midland meat, that's what they're talking about, the belly. It's that belly meat. It's got an extra it's just got a little extra something that that rib meat ain't got. Oh, Frank's not here yet. This morning he comes every single day and I'm gonna feed him some of this. We'll see if he likes it. He don't come for the bacon, he comes for the coffee. That man likes coffee better than anybody I've ever seen. And I like coffee pretty good myself. But that man is a coffee freak. And he'll tell you to your face. We're about to have us enough here for breakfast. I've got my fire going already. All I gotta do is throw this in the skillet and we will be on the road. I think that's enough. I'm gonna put the rest of this in this pan right here. And the way I do it, I'll keep this in my freezer and it's got enough salt in it, it won't freeze terribly hard because my freezer's a propane freezer and in the summertime, 
it has to do all it can do to keep stuff cold. It will freeze stuff, but if it's got salt in it like this, it'll just keep it stiff, but where I can still cut it. So that's what we do. I cut on demand every morning. I don't slice a bunch and have it in a bag in the freezer for this situation. But sometimes I, I've got a meat slicer. Sometimes I'll cut way ahead. But anyway, let's get in there and get this meat frying. And let's see how Frank likes it when he gets here. Well, this time I'm putting my bacon, I decided to put it in a dry skillet to see if the grease or the fat in the bacon was enough. I know what you're coming for, Frank. Come on over here. I'm on that get white hill. Come on. <laughs> if you want coffee, you got to come to me, son. <laughs> nobody, nobody see nothing, not see you. Come here. Look at this bacon in this skillet here. Oh, yeah, I see it. Come here. I don't want to come on. Come on. I don't know what to say. Come on. Let's see. Well, you don't be behind the camera, son. Hey, <laughs> dear buddy, pretty. Ain't it pretty? It looks Look like, it's just like this. Look at that. Uh, what do you yeah. think about that, son? Yeah. That's it's going to be you, pretty. That's how you cook bacon, son. It's going to be pretty. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's gonna be any good? Hope so. Hope so. You didn't kill that big old pig, did you? No, that's wild. This is wild. This is trapped in mud. I thought you said you're gonna. Yeah, I, I do want to kill the big one soon. But I probably won't do it today. Oh, I'm gonna okay. cut up all these wild pigs today. Oh. Right, what do you think about that? Good, good. Huh? Good. You gonna help me? I don't know. I gotta go in here and get some. Get some coffee. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. That's all he thinks about, folks. Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Remember what you told me last year when I asked you about the bacon? You said you were gonna eat all of it. You ain't giving me none of it. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna eat all that bacon, son? Huh? All of it. You ain't getting none. <laughs> He's mean, folks. He's Could mean. be so. <laughs> He's mean. He's mean. Me to fry eggs now. Mm 
Jump down in the descriptions of this video and get you some camp dog, baby. Michael McGee cooks breakfast every morning. A lot of times it's scrapple because we ain't had bacon and we ain't had sausage in probably two months. So we've had a scrapple overload. But buddy, when I seen we got wild hogs, my little heart went pitter patter because I knew bacon was on the menu again. Mm. Can't beat it. Oh, and sausage will be on the menu again soon as well. This breakfast is about whipped up right now. Got the old French press coffee maker going. Woo, doggies. Coffee's ready. Coming in, hot stuff, hot stuff. Oh yeah. Whew. Whew. All right, Frank, you ready for round two yet? Round two, yeah. Round two, round two. Ow, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me, son. Mm. All right, Matt, take you some bacon, pass some bacon around here. We hungry. I done had my coffee today. I'm gonna go with milk. Milk, milk. Uh, you just gonna get one little old rinky dink thing. I, I wouldn't even need them. Here, get some more. Get some bacon. Get some bacon. I can't get it. You can't get it. What's wrong with my hot? Hot. Okay, good. <laughs> hot. 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 Now you turn the story off. Well, I had to turn the story off. I'm afraid I might get in trouble with the uh, with uh, YouTube. YouTube. Oh, boy, he made it. I made a mess. <laughs> YouTube uh, has these strict laws about not playing what's on the radio. But if you got kids and you have a radio, look up. Your story hour with Uncle Dan and Aunt Carol. It comes on early morning and late, not late evening, but six o'clock here. Really wholesome stories. Uncle Dan and Aunt Carol. You can look it up online and learn which radio station has it in your area. Way, way better than, than kids programming on TV. All right. Try that bacon out, boy. Yeah, good. Oh, man. Good, good, good. Mm, let me try a different piece. Not too salty. What do you think, Matt? I didn't smoke yeah. it at all because it's so hot weather, but I might take some out and smoke it. But that's good without being smoked, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Matt, what do you think? Well, I gotta have me a egg. Piece of egg here. There's a paliki. <laughs> Nobody knows what that means, son. That means Mike and McGee is the best breakfast cook ever. Is that what that means? <laughs> Nobody brings that. Man, you good. Good, huh? Well, folks, what do you got to say, Frank? Tell the people what you got to say. I ain't gonna say nothing. He said he's sorry for being so mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, I believe that's a wrap on the bacon. Be looking for a sausage video coming up shortly. But for now, that's all we've got for you. We hope you have a great day. Oh, and go make some of this for yourself. We'll see you on the next video. Five, mm. four, three, three two, one.
<laughs> mm, they want to hear the story too bad they can't hear it. Leave it up. No one else has. Anyone can raise and sell berries. Today's story is about Walter Knotts at Knotts Berry Farm. Larger, sweeter, juicier berries than anyone else. 